Hello, everyone. I hope you guys are having a good Friday night. It's November 13th. And, yeah, so today I am back with a another video. Um, And, yeah, so today we are going to be talking about the tropics um, because we now have a another tropical storm. Um, this was our area to watch um, a few days ago. And now it's formed into Iota, or however you say it. Iota, I don't, I don't really know. Um, but yeah, so this is our next tropical storm. It's a weak, very weak tropical storm right now with only 40 mile per hour winds. Um, you can click on it. This is going to be a very rare storm for mid November in the Caribbean. We already have potential for a major hurricane for the next two days. And so this is not good. Uh, this is going to go right to the north of where Ada hits Central America. So this is going to be potentially a pretty bad situation again. Um, so yeah, this is potentially going to go, or this is likely going to under, undergo rapid intensification, which does not happen a whole lot in mid-November. Uh, so yeah, this is, it's still mid-November and we still have another potential major hurricane. Now we have Theta up here. Um, and yeah, Theta is just going to continue moving kind of to the north, to the east, and it's going to make a uh, shift to the north and it's going to die out. Go, to the, go into a depression and die out. And yeah, so that's the tropics. We're not going to go too into the tropics today because I'm kind of tired about the tropics right now. Um, so yeah, now we do have some severe weather though. This is our day two outlook for tomorrow. So this is for Saturday, November 14th. Um, and yeah, so we have a slight risk for areas in northwestern Arkansas and southern Missouri and eastern Oklahoma. And we have a marginal risk going all the way, all the, almost all the way up to St. Louis. Um, we do have a 5% tornado risk. So we do actually have a decent tornado threat tomorrow. When we have a 15 wind and a 5% hail. So we do have a slight hail threat, but it's not very likely tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be seeing what this could do. Now, right now, as of right now, I, I do not think I'm going to be doing a live stream for this. But that could change so if, this look, if this event starts to look better. And if we get an enhanced risk, which I don't know, I don't, I don't think that's likely, then I will live stream. Um, only if we get an enhanced risk or the storms blow up and they look really good. And yeah, uh, now let's actually look at tomorrow real quick. So we're going to look at some of the ingredients. We're going to take some soundings. So tomorrow morning, we don't have a whole lot of moisture in our slight risk. We have moisture building, though. But tomorrow afternoon, we have dew points in the low to mid 60s. Um, in the area. So we have plenty of moisture um, to support severe weather. Dew points in the 60s, or dews in the 60s are in this blue color right here. And yeah, so we're going to have some decent moisture tomorrow. And then it's going to get wiped out really quick behind the, the strong cold front. Uh, so, you know, let's look, at, let's look at Cape for tomorrow. Let's see what kind of instability instability we have. So, yeah, so tomorrow afternoon we have, actually surprisingly, we have almost 1,500 ml, almost 2,000 ml Cape in northeastern Oklahoma. So that is pretty good. Um, we don't have a whole lot of Cape in the Arkansas, but where we have our storms initiating, we have a decent amount of Cape for this time of year. Um, so that is going to be good. We're going to have more instability than we did with the Missouri, Illinois, Iowa event we had the other day. Um, which was a slight risk. Going, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we we had we had just our 100 reports that could have gone up though. Um, so yes, yeah, so we're going to see how this actually goes. As we do have, this is looking like a decent sized event. Um, let's look at lapse rates now. So lapse rates for tomorrow. We don't have a whole lot of lapse rates. We have pretty much fours to six point twos. But the further north you go, though, northern Oklahoma, southeastern Kansas, all the way up to uh, St. Louis, we have 5.6, almost 6 in St. Louis. Um, so we do have not a whole lot, not not high lapse rates at all, um, which could limit the hail threat a little bit. I mean, it would be much better if we had lapse rates like 8, which we don't. Uh, so now let's look at the surface based lifted index. So for lift tomorrow, we do have actually this is the highest I've seen it in November so far. Um, in our Illinois event, we only had around negative three to negative four. We have negative six in this area, so this area could 
probably be the area we're going to watch for a storm initiation. Um, now, let's let's zoom in on that area in a second. Um, well, first, we're going to look at capping because capping could ruin this if we have a, if we have a lot of capping in the atmosphere. Um, so tomorrow afternoon, we do have a little bit of capping earlier in the afternoon, but when the storm like initiate, we only have a little bit. See, so yeah, let's take some soundings now. Let's try to zoom in on that area. All right, so here it goes. This is a this is a decent area. There's really I, I wish on Pivotal Weather you could select which sectors you want. Like, actually go on the map and draw like a box sector to zoom in on, so you could get the exact area you want. Because we don't need all of Texas, but we're gonna have to do that. All right, so yeah, this is 18Z. Let's go to. So our storms initiate right here. In this area, we will look to that. Maybe have a supercell in northeastern Oklahoma. Let's take a sounding in front of this. Now, this is not a bad sounding. We have 52 knots of surface to three kilometers shear, 45 knots of surface to one kilometer shear, and ML CAPE of 1,251, which is ML CAPE is what matters the most because it's mixed layer, surface base of 651. We have a possible hazard type of tour. Uh, the hodograph looks good. Uh, the critical angles, not the best. Um, but yeah, we do have strong shear and decent cape. Um, so this overall, we could get some definitely a tornado out of this sounding, but we have surface three kilometers shear of 548. Or not in no, the surface of three surface of three kilometer helicity. Uh, or storm relative helicity, sorry. And energy helicity of 2.2. Um, and then, yeah, so we do have CIN, though, surface of negative 58 and ML of negative 8, which that could help keep the cells discrete, so that could should or that could actually be good. Uh, so, yeah, we, we're going to have to see that there's, that could be a supercell right there, and if this does happen, how this is showing, we're definitely proud we could have a live stream, likely. Um, let's take a sounding in western Arkansas now, in front of this line, so we don't have as good cape once we have the line going. Um, but we, it's, it's okay. We have really good shear. The surface of three kilometers, 56. Surface to one is 52 knots. That is really good shear. Um, we have uh, storm relative felicity. Surface of three kilometers. We have 734. And yeah, so overall, this is a this is a, a pretty good sounding actually. Hoda looks about the same as the other one. The critical angle, it's better than the other one. Um, and yeah, so lapse rates though are still on the lower side. But overall, these are some pretty good soundings, though. In fact, this could be an interesting event to watch. Now, further north into northern Arkansas in front of this line, we have dew points of 59, a temperature of 64. It is a little bit more capped with negative 48 MLCIN, but we still have that good shear, so we have to see how that would play into it. Um, so, yeah, let's go a little bit further north now into almost into Missouri. Dew point of 55, temperature of 59. Uh, dew is a little bit, is pretty low actually. 55 is okay. For this time of year in Missouri, that's pretty bad though. Um, you could get something out of 55, out of a 55 dew point. We've had multiple events over the past couple of years. We've had uh, dews in the 50s and have gotten tornadoes. Um, and most of the time is with cold core setups. We had December 1st, 2018 in Illinois, which that was a cold core setup. Um, so, yeah, this is that's further north of Missouri. But, yeah, so I think that tomorrow we could potentially have a decent severe weather day. I think that tomorrow has probably a, has a, a pretty low risk of actually busting. Um, if tomorrow does bust, it's going to be due to cap, capping or low cape or low, low instability, I guess. Um, and yeah, so I'd say the best tornado threat is likely in northwestern Arkansas and a little bit of northeastern Oklahoma and southwestern Missouri, kind of this this area right here. Now, I wouldn't be surprised. We probably we could potentially see a tornado out of that. Um, but I think the best area is going to be this area. Um, and yeah, we'll have to see though because this is still this event is still a good couple. This event is still a good uh, 15 to 20 hours out now. So we're going to have new models coming in in the morning and maybe another video coming in in the morning on this event. Um, and so any slight shifts on what actually where the cold front is could shift the, my 
my best view area from like from this area up to the north, east, to west. Um, so you were not to see about that. Now, let's look at the. Uh, so here we have the GFS model. We're going to be looking at precipitation type and rate. Um, so. Yeah, so right now we have a, a big storm system in the northwest with a lot of Rocky Mountain snow, and some of that's pretty heavy. That is not going to bring a whole lot of snow to the U.S. It's going to bring very some pretty cold air on the backside of it, but we're not going to have a whole lot of snow. Maybe some snow showers for areas like North, North Dakota, northeastern Minnesota, and northern Wisconsin, and northern Michigan. Now, in the northeast, so that's a different scenario because northern Michigan could actually get some decent snow from this. You guys can see they stay mostly snow and they get some heavy snow also for areas like around caribou. Um, and then on the back side, we have some some showers further to the south into northern PA. Um, and yeah, it's a pretty big low pressure. And then we have another big storm system still in the northwest. And this could be our next winter storm, though. And this could be a pretty big one. Um, and it could actually affect the areas a pretty good snowfall. So this is uh, Saturday, the 21st in the morning. We have heavy snow going to the north of Omaha, right, right, th almost right through Des Moines, but right to the north of Des Moines, and going into southern Wisconsin. Um, so yeah, we have a very heavy snow though. Very heavy snow in in those purple colors, and this is still pretty far out. So t the, where this actually sets up could definitely change. And then this moves later in the afternoon. This moves closer into Iowa, getting in, letting the wind get in on some of that heavy snow. Um, and yeah, so we can see we have still snow showers back in the Kansas and almost the Texas Panhandle, and snow going all the way into Michigan. And this moves northeast and brings some snow to the interior northeast and maybe to some coastal areas of the north or New England. Um, and so yeah, now let's take a look because we do have some model consistency with this. Let's look at the Canadian. We're going to look at the past model run in the Canadian because the new one's not out. So the Canadian shows our big winter storm right there for the northern rain. And then it does show, it shows our winter storm happening. It has it a little bit further to the north. It has the heavy snow a lot further to the north, actually. So as there is like northern Wisconsin, central Minnesota on it. And it has... It does have snow showers in the back side of the south, not even close to Kansas City. Um, so, yeah, we're going to have to see um, what just happened. Obviously, I'm going to see snow showers all the way almost in the northern Oklahoma, the Kansas City getting on it, in on it in Des Moines. Or Des Moines, sorry. Um, getting in on it. So, now let's look at the European, because the European is another, is one of the better models for forecasting winter storms, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, we can see the European does have a winter storm also. It has it in a kind of a similar area to the GFS, although it has it slightly further south and it has a northeast getting some snow. Um, so, this will likely be our next winter storm. But where it, which areas get hit by it the hardest? Kind of, we really, I, I, we have a lot of model uncertainty with this. We're going to have to see, though, which areas get hit the hardest by this. I'm going to get the wrap of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll be back tomorrow. Yes.